What's going on, Martellus? How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Hanging in there, man. Another day above ground, right? Every day above ground is better than one below ground. That's Unless it. it's Mario, the below underground levels are actually fun. Those are actually some of the best ones, like the second oh, level. Yeah. Well, I love your stance on imagination and how powerful it is. What do you think about the statement that you're ultimately every person is the imagination of themselves? I believe, okay, so this is what I think, all right? Who are you, right? Who are we as people, right? If you think about who you are, it's just a projection of ideas that people have put onto you and some have stuck, right? Until you're able to rip off all those other ideas that people had of you, you can never become who you truly are. So a lot of our life is to strip away what everyone else told us what we were to truly figure out who we truly are. But by the time you try to introduce your new version of yourself to the world, everyone wants the old version. They're not really as, they're not really into what this idea of, oh, you change. I'm supposed to change, right? So I personally feel like every single day when you leave a person and you come back to that person, you're supposed to treat them like they're a new person because they just... Depending on what they occur during their day, they are a little bit different. They have changed. And to acknowledge those changes in a person is very, very, like, is very respectful. Reimagine them as the way they should have happened with the best positive outcome for everybody in mind. And doing that day after day after day, build, it's like a brick every day. That's why I do naturally. I naturally do that. Like, I naturally think about... I truly believe, like, my whole goal is to be the most creative person I could possibly be, most creative person in the world. Like, I don't want to go in a, I never want to be in the Hall of Fame of sports, but I do want to be in the Hall of Fame of creativity. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to be up there on that level where everybody's like, man, this dude created so many great things because everything that human beings enjoy are the result of another human being's creativity. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's true. You, like whatever it is you want to do, like someone created it and now you have access to it to enjoy it. Like movies, music, books, dance, um, cars, like whatever it is that you're into, like it was created, you know what I'm saying? So by the, another person's imagination. Is there any such thing as an original thought anymore? Or are we all just recycling thoughts over and over that have already existed prior to us? Well, that's hard to say, but I also believe that once you have a thought it's, it's put into the universe so it's free for other people to think. So nothing can be original. Because as soon as you have it, other people have access to it now. So that's why you have to execute while you can. Because you give people access by thinking of it. So that's why it's not original. Because the moment you think of it, it's in the universe and someone else is allowed to have that moment of that epiphany at the same time as you. So I think that's just how, that's just energy and vibrations. We put vibrations into the world and a lot of our vibrations are thoughts. I'm at home. Right. My, wife, my wife's a great cook, and I just like to eat at home. I just don't know what the hell they be doing in these restaurants these days. <laughs> you have no yeah, idea. I have no idea. I went to a Chinese buffet. I went back to Houston, and to be nostalgic, we had this Chinese buffet. Like, I love General Tao's chicken, right? It's, like, one of my favorite things in the world, right? So we're at this Chinese buffet, and while we're there, um, where everyone's making their plate, right? And they make their plate, and, we, and I'm sitting there. But then I see, like, the people clear at the table, they take the plate and they scrape stuff back into the buffet line, oh, like man. the leftover rice and stuff like that. So I'm disgusted, right? So I'm with a yeah. group, whatever. So I'm disgusted. I sit down and I wait till they start eating. It's like, why are you not eating? I was like, I ain't eating none of this. And it's like, what you mean? I was like, y'all shouldn't eat either. But I waited till they ate enough that I sat back and we watched. And I was like, I bet she does it again. And she did it again. They all started being like, ah, like yeah. So that happened. Oh, so I just never trusted good. them grievance real quick i just gotta i'm a giants fan you were here for one year man and you were fantastic i want to thank you for the one year but why why wouldn't they keep you i'm so upset by that i didn't get jerry, the opportunity to watch you jerry reese just wasn't interested in paying people that's ridiculous man that's one of my biggest i'm so upset about that bro you were awesome yeah. i want to stay I, I wish you did we would have yes. had a ring with you easily definitely I mean, you got one with Jake Ballard. Ridiculous. That's right. <laughs> I wanted to dive into the promotion that you're doing with uh, Dos Keys and the, uh, the the bowl game quiz, the college football, football college. You're a professor now, right? I'm a professor. I'm Professor B, kind of like Professor X, but not quite. I mean, I have legs and I can walk. But, uh, <laughs> at the 
Dosekis, like people could enroll at dosekis.com backslash edu. And we're a beer school, so I don't see why anyone wouldn't want to enroll. And when you enroll, you get you take the exam and you automatically enter for a chance to win tickets to the national championship game, right? So the college football championship game. So right now what we're trying to do is educate people on how to, you know, how to watch the game better. You know, we while you have your beer in your hand, so you can shout educated things at the screen instead of foolishness like your other people that's watching the game with you, you know? Instead of being like, oh, that quarterback sucks, you could be like, it was a hot route. Throw the hot route. The mic and the sand blessed off the strong side. The tight end is hot. <laughs> Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you could look at a cornerback blitz and be like, oh, there's a cornerback blitzing from the short side of the field. Why didn't the court? Why didn't the right receiver run a skip route? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that type of stuff. Right. You know, instead of being like, oh, the quarterback should have seen him coming. Well, the receiver should have gave him the signal that the blitz was coming. So know what to look for in the game. That's what we teach at our beer school. Yeah, I make a lot of music. So, yeah, my my albums are under Marty Soares Rex on iTunes and Spotify and all that stuff. And. I have a new album coming out next year called Martellus, The Corporate Experience. And, um, <laughs> and um, so I just love making music. I grew up in band, played the trombone. And um, ever since then, I've made music my entire life. So I probably, like last year, I put out like 50 songs, just on yeah. the rip of things. I just love making music. I've made music with Snoop Dogg, The Dream, you know, like I've, I write songs for people and stuff. So I just really like making music. It's like, I call it uh, the black man's golf, you know, because it's just as expensive as golf, but I don't get nothing out of it at the end. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) You've caught passes from Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Eli Manning, Romo, Cutler. What made each of those guys' balls unique? And who had the strongest arm? And we got to slow down with that question. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think Aaron Rodgers has the strongest arm and has the most talented arm as far as throwing the ball. Eli probably had like the weakest arm out of all those guys. Um, Tom Brady is the most consistent thrower. Like, you know, like you could run a route and you could know where the ball is going to be with your eyes closed. Um, just because of the repetition with him, you just know where to expect the ball. Tony Romo threw a very catchable ball. Like, it was very, like, soft. I didn't catch a lot of balls from Tony. Um, but as I look back at watching him and seeing him play, I realized how good of a quarterback he was. So he had a great touch, great ball, great back shoulder fade, good jump ball. And that's what happened to Dez when Dak, you don't have to be as open with Tony because he could put the ball in the right spot for you to catch it. That's kind of what happened to Dez. Dak wasn't as comfortable throwing that jump ball and that back shoulder phase. So that's when Dez kind of had a decline because he had to be with the right quarterback who didn't need him to be wide, wide open, right? Um, so, um, but yeah, those like the the guys. I really love John Kitna. John Kitna is probably one of my most favorite quarterbacks to ever play with. Um, he's just a great dude. But all those other guys are very, they're all talented, obviously. Like they're all Super Bowl champions except for Romo. Right. And color. Color. Uh, no, actually, color. Color had a strongest arm. I forgot that. Color had a stronger arm than Aaron. Not as accurate as Aaron, and had the arm talent of Aaron. But as far as someone who could just throw the ball, um, definitely color. 